Big week coming up. The Hammer, the playoff series are upon us. And John Casey joins us, but he wants to scrap the play in. What? Well, <laughs> some great discussions, though. So we've got so much to talk about. A little bit of banter along the way. Patty Mills heading to Miami, too. Let's go. This is the Basketball Show with Shane the Hammer Heel. What they going to say next? Well, we talked about this at the top of the show, Hammer, but the great man, Brian Gorton, back in the NBL coaching the Sydney Kings next season. What were your first thoughts when you heard the news? Well, it's not a surprise. Uh, We'd spoken about it maybe a month ago, Jojo, that this was probably going to be a perfect fit for the club and for Brian Gorgian. I mean, the club had to save face. The, the Culturally, amongst the NBL this year, it was poor. They were poorly perceived. Fans wanted to change. Players wanted to change. So uh, they went after the GOAT and they got it done. And I think this is the perfect scenario for Brian Gorgian. He's the master of taking clubs and teams that have underachieved with a poor culture and being able to turn it around really, really quickly. He would have got paid handsomely like he should have. He would have demanded a huge budget. So expect to see some big signings next year because Gorge wouldn't have gone there unless he had prepared them to put their hands in their pocket to pay big for next year. There's a little bit of unrest reported among the among the group. Angus Glover, Geordie Hunter, Jonah Bolden, those guys weren't particularly happy. Uh, so we hear. Um, what does this mean for them? Does this potentially change their mind and they reconsider staying with the Kings? Well, I think so. I mean, their agents will have already been testing the market and they know what they can get elsewhere. But as far as a role goes, it's pretty attractive playing for the the national coach, for the boomers coach. If somebody like Brian Gorgian says to Glover, you are the... You are the style of player that I love. I've had success with in the past. I know I can play you. I know what sort of role you'll have and what sort of impact you have. Well, then that's pretty attractive for somebody like Glover that's won past championships with the Kings. I think the other thing is Gorgian will change the culture. He won't want owners or people speaking out of school. He won't want people making outlandish statements about other teams and other players around the league or putting them down. Brian Gorgian, when, uh, and, you know, I've been the captain of a championship team for him. He is so against anybody putting, you know, saying anything negative to, to any other clubs or any other people or having opinions. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. But, um, you know, I think Hunter would be another good piece for him. And I think those guys under a great coach and with those sort of changes would probably want to stay. If you're Xavier Cooks, are you back in the NBL next season? No doubt. He's going to have another huge price tag on his, you know, what he's been able to do in Asia. And uh, I, I think that uh, Gorgian will really push for that. And I think if you you cooks, you want to come back and play for the national coach. He wants to be able to play at the Olympics and be, you know, one of those players that's in the team every year. And, you know, whilst there's never any guarantees, you know, the, the national coach, once you re- get recruited and you get to see them on a day-to-day basis, he, he, it's the sort of thing that just goes. And, and he'll be on that team and he's going to get paid big bucks. That don't worry about that to come home. I wanted to ask you what the breakers look like next season, Hammer, because in terms of contracted players, they have Finn Delaney and Dane Pino, and that is it. So if you are Modi Mayor, if you are the Breakers, do you want to bring back that full trio of imports? Are you bringing back Will McDowell-White if you can? What are you thinking? Well, I think McDowell-White, he's got to be the focal point. They have to get him done. I think, you know, he had a tough season because of injuries, but I think his upside is enormous. Um, they've got to try and get both imports on. We know that Lamb's going to be out for probably a year, which takes him out for the season. Uh, but the other two, and they've had a history of being able to sign really good imports. And then obviously they'll get to the table and, and see who the best New Zealand players are, are around and who are the best free agents to be able to complement this team. But they've done a good job the last few years of being able to recruit talent. Yeah, get the feeling that they will uh, bounce back next season. We're going to talk about the WNBL Perth through to the grand final series. Now, when we were previewing this series, you did say that they were a bit of a smoky and they went and got it done. Yep, I thought they were a chance and uh, they certainly showed their class against Townsville and they won hands down. Ari McDonald is the best import and probably the best player in the competition. She was outstanding in both games. They had no answer for her at the guard position in both games and she did what she wanted. You know, a player that I've been really impressed with is um, 
um, is Annalie Maley. She is she is really matured. A couple of years ago when she was the MVP, I felt like she was like held a skelter. You know, she sort of played to her own beat. She got a lot of points and a lot of stats, but she's taken her game to another level now. And I felt like her patience um, of being able to play around other good players was really impressive. Some good passes, hit big shots at the same time. Atwell was outstanding. She, she you know, is a, is a future Opal, I think. Um, and they're big girl Porter. So they're, I think they're the favourites to win the whole thing. I don't care who wins out of the Melbourne teams. I think that Perth can win the championship from here. Well, let's see what happens. Uh, you alluded to it just then, though. We're not ignoring the other series. At the time of recording, that game is actually being played this evening. So next week we will know who is in that grand final series, whether it be the Boomers or Southside. Uh, Paddy Mills. He's heading to my team, the Miami Heat. Uh, I, I really like this when I saw it, Hammer. Uh, obviously, he's basically been stashed uh, for the best part of this season. Hasn't had that many opportunities. And my first thought was that Coach Spo is the kind of person who rewards those gritty, hardworking players. So there's, there's hope for Paddy that we might actually see him and he could fit in really well there. Well, there's no doubt he fits in culturally. Yeah, I think everything that the Miami Heat stand for, so does Paddy Mills. So I think he'll play a perfect role there. It'll just be how many opportunities he gets. And I think that will happen when you're playing in a series that his number will get called and you'd have to think that he's going to be ready. But if I put my boomer's hat on, I would have rather seen him in Europe. I feel like if he had gone to Europe and he would have been a guy that's starting, the pressure's on him to be able to play game in, game out against much tougher defence it is in, in the Euro League than it is in the NBA, then I think that would have got him hardened and, and really ready to play a similar sort of role than what he will with the Boomers. So uh, selfishly, I would have liked to have seen that, but well done to him being able to join a, a great organisation. Five. Time now for Hoops Highlights, thanks to Boost Mobile, starting with a Warriors Annihilator. Jeff Spencer, that lets you know where your team is. Wow! A mammoth hammer there from Brown off the delivery from White. Four. Wolves dominating early. Lob, go bear! The plus! <laughs> Back to Rudy's roll here. Daniel Tice showing up. Norman Powell. Three. Bless. The determined group led by Ooh. Anthony Simons. Cuffs it with a left hand. A ferocious dunk. <laughs> and a foul. Anthony Simons taking on the big man, Rudy Gobert, who gets it done. Two. I Van Caro. Under five to play. Second quarter. Oh, big time crossover move and slam dunk. One. Ball stripped away. Abdita dropped it. Put it up, but followed by Colin Sexton. So on this play, Keontae George is saying, this is a pass, guys, right off the glass. I believe him, too. You love to see it. Those are your Boost Mobile Hoops highlights. All right, time for points made with Hoops guru John Casey. Uh, Casey, you were down in Wollongong for the play in between the Hawks and Breakers, so you saw firsthand the impact that J-Rob had on that team. He came up clutch. What did you make of that performance? I'm still buzzing about it, Joe. It was outstanding to be there in Wollongong. They put on a great show. The fans were as noisy as they've ever been. And I've been lucky enough to be there since the opening night of that stadium in 1998. It was outstanding and a great win. And Justin Robinson, well, I was trying to recall a more clutch fourth quarter performance in a big NBL game than that, and I couldn't come up with it. Rob Rose rings a few uh, memory bells for me doing similar type scenario, but to score 14 of the last 17 points in the game, including six of six from the free throw line, and did not look like missing. It was a physical and mentally strong performance that was just outstanding. And I must admit, I had my reservations about Justin Robinson, about would he get back to where he was after that injury. But he answered all his critics there. He stood up. He won that game for the Illawarra Hawks and credit to him. And I also want to say credit to Justin Tatum as well. To have the courage in a first-year coach to put a player into the starting lineup in Dave O'Hickey who had not started a game the entire season. I don't know there's too many coaches in the NBL right now that would have been 
courageous enough to go down that path. It was outstanding by Tatum. It was even better by Justin Robinson. And congratulations to Illawarra. Yeah, they were outstanding, no doubt about that. And I agree with everything that you've said. Robinson was uh, awesome. The only thing that I didn't like, I mean, <laughs> he gets, does the interview after the game. And everyone's, you know, propping him up and everything else. And he says, big-time players step up in big-time games. And I was he like, did. I was like, cut it out, mate. I saw you play three, day, three days earlier when you laid an egg and you got your ass handed to you by the Tasmanian <laughs> Jack Jumpers. You averaged 12 <laughs> points at 30% from three for the whole year. Like, he owed them one. And, and you're right, he came up big. It was good. Well done to you, pal. Take the kudos. Now we want to see what you do if you're a big-time player against Melbourne United in a few days' time. Don't just have one big game and call yourself a big-time player. Let's see whether you can do it consistently because it's the first time I've seen it since he's been in the country. Exactly right. He's got to back it up. But now uh, we've got to keep things moving, though, guys. Uh, good and bad news for the Boomers right now. You've got Duet Reef going off a, a career high, but then Ben Simmons back on the pine, injured again. Case, how much... What? Ben Simmons isn't playing, Joe. Ben Simmons isn't playing. I, I, I read a quote the other day where Ben Simmons said something like, I'm going to give everything I've got to this t- team. Oh, come on, oh, Hammer. Now, look on sorry. the positive side. He is giving everything to this team because he's decided he can't play at the moment because he wants to be ready to go for the Paris Olympics. I heard that his manager put his hand up and said, oh, look, I haven't done the right thing in getting in the support off court that he needed in terms of the treatment for the nerve problem in his back. Good news is, Ben Simmons, it's not a serious injury. And as I say, I like the idea. Rest him now, having ready for Paris because he gave us glimpses of what he can bring to the table. But as you say, Joe, the really good news as well as Paddy Mills being picked up in the NBA and going to Miami, which is great news because he gets to play alongside Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, and they are a chance in that Eastern Conference, although no one can beat the Celtics at the moment, and Milwaukee are going to be tough. But Duop Reef, what he is doing in the NBA is just incredible, and I'm so happy for him. Career-high 26 yesterday, and he hit five of six threes in that game. He's top 10 in the competition in rookies in three-point shooting at the moment. He's just having a great season. I don't know if it's going to translate into the FIBA game, though. That's the only thing. What he does there in the NBA, we don't want him doing that for Australia at the Paris Olympic. Well, he can knock down five or six threes every game if he wants, but we need interior presence. And I don't know. Look, this is where people get confused. The difference between the style of the NBA and the style of a FIBA game are completely different. So while it's great that Duop Reith is in terrific form at the moment for Portland, it's not necessarily going to translate into 25 and 26 a game when we get to Paris at the Olympics in 145 days' time. No, it, it won't, Case. But what it will do is you'll have a starting centre that plays with the sort of confidence that he's played against the best players in the world and knows that he can get it done. He'll be a far better player than what he was at the last World Cup. Don't Make no mistake about that. And what I think this story of of Reith shows to a lot of players is that you can get cut from one team and it might not be the right fit but you might be perfect for another team and you you know just because you get cut from the NBA doesn't mean you're not an NBA player in the right circumstances we know it's so much about timing and opportunity and he's been able to take this one with both hands and uh, it is certainly great to see it is. You put it in the basket of things that you love to see. Kay, uh, thanks so much for joining us again this week, and we'll chat to you over the course of the, the playoff series. Absolute pleasure again. Congratulations to the Hawks, but I'm telling you, Melbourne United are sweeping them straight out of the equation. And the other semi final, Perth Tassie, <laughs> that's 50 50. Don't know which way that one's going to fall, but if you want to pin me down to a selection, I'm going with the Jack Jumpers in a sweep. Hammer, the playoff series are here. The Illawarra Hawks, who would have thought? They would be booking a date in the final four with Melbourne United. Obviously, that clutch win over the Breakers. Credit to the entire organisation for getting themselves there. Now they have a, their biggest test, though, right? They've been swept by United this season. Is there a world where you can see them really competing and, and threatening United for a grand final spot? Well, I mean, first of all, Joe, I agree with everything you're saying about the way Justin Tatum and the club has been able to turn around their fortunes. Well done to them. Uh, but this is where it ends. Uh, they, they've got no chance to beat Melbourne United. This is going to be a sweep. And uh, the only chance that I say that they have is in the first half of game one. 
And the reason why they've got an opportunity to be able to try and jump Melbourne United is because they haven't played for so long. There will be some rust there. But I think once they get through that, the second half, Melbourne's going to over, overpower them. I think they've got the best defensive backcourt in the competition. And I think they'll start to become a little bit more stingy, Melbourne United. I think as the season went on, they sort of played the way other teams played and just got up and down and tried to outscore teams. And there was bigger scores put up against them. I think Melbourne United get back to basics. I think they get nasty again. and I think they drag teams back down. And I think it's going to be, I think they'll get over the line in game one, but I think they'll actually smash them in Illawarra in game two to create this sweep. I think they're just too strong. All right. Uh, next up, Friday night, the Wildcats are hosting Tassie. Now, this is obviously going to be a, a lot more competitive. Uh, Perth, I think a 2-1 on the season with Tassie. Jack Jumpers beat them a couple of weeks ago, but you probably don't read too much into that one. Uh, who wins this series? I think it's a flip of the coin. Jojo, I think this is a really even contest. I think um, what we're seeing from Tassie is that they're playing their best basketball at the end of the season. I think we're seeing um, Will uh, Magne playing his best basketball. I think he's they've handled him perfectly, bringing him off the bench, playing him sort of half a game as the season went on. And then in that last game that he has to come up and they absolutely smash the Hawks. And he came through. I think he looks great. I think he can have a really big impact in this game. Um, they they will go to Perth for the same reasons, as I said um, about Illawarra, is they will go and have a good first half. They have to. and I, But I, they have a chance to be able to hang on. I think that Perth will be a bit rusty, and I think it will be tough for them. Um, the only flip side to that is I think that Bryce Cotton is going to be fresh. So the, the rest came at a good time for him because we know he puts more into, into every game over a season than any other player in the competition. He gets beat up. He carries more responsibility than any other player. So I think this rest will be good for him at his age. I think he'll be fresh. He'll be ready for a big game. And if he has a big game, then we know they're tough to be able to beat. All right. You said flip of the coin. You can't sit on the fence, though. Who's winning the series? I'm going to go for Tassie. Uh, you know, only because I'm being pushed to sort of make that call. Um, It is a series that can go either way. But I just think they're coming into their own. I think they've been there before into these situations, and I think they've come through. Um, Perth have done an outstanding job to bounce back from the poor start that they have, and they've got the pieces to be able to win it. But um, I just think it's Tassie's turn to be able to make another final. Okay, so that game's Friday, game two, Monday, and then next Wednesday, a potential game three in that series. So it should be good. That is all we've got time for. It's the pointy end of the season, Hammer. We love it. Thank you guys for watching the basketball show. As always, thanks to Code Sport, Boost Mobile, and the Throwback Store. We'll catch you guys next week. This is a co-production by News Corp Australia and Closer Sports.